Hello and welcome to this episode for Electropages. I'm your host, Robert Mitchell, and today we're here in Bedded World 2024, Nuremberg. Now we are at the Micron booth and we are joined by Ryan. So thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Fantastic. Now we've got some really cool stuff to look at today. But just before we jump into this, I've got one question for you. Yep. For the audience out there, could you just tell who you are and what you do at Micron? Sure. I'm Ryan Leite. I lead the systems engineering team for Micron's embedded business unit. Fantastic. So some of your staff tried to tell me what was going on and I had to kind of shush them very, very quickly. Uh, I want you to you tell want me reveal. what's going on. Absolutely. So what have we got here? Sure. So what we're looking at here is the world's first four port SSD and it is targeted for automotive and industrial applications. So oh. it's got oh. four, port. four ports. For one SSD. Correct. Eh? And it's a BGA SSD that we happen to mount to an M.2 card here, but it's under that sticker right there. So we're connected through just passive interconnect here to four different systems. Sorry, four different SSD ports into one SSD? Correct. How does that work? Quite well, actually. Thanks for asking. But I can show you how we've decided to demonstrate it here, if you like. No, no, no. Let's talk about this first. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about this first. Okay. Very good. So, okay. So as I understand, with an SSD, you've got your input output connections, right? Yep. So it, it's just a normal SSD there. That's a PCIe Gen 4 by 4. And how are you splitting it into four different ports? It is through the controller able to treat them all four ports as unique ports or combine them together. So you get a choice. So you can get extra, so you can increase the speed from four ports. Correct. Well, well you, this is one I'm not sure I understand. This yeah, is one I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. See, because if you've got one SSD and it's being split to four, I would have thought the speed would reduce for each one. But what? Is it that you can have different things running at the same time? Ah, great question. Memory? Yes. So each of these has a PCIe Gen 4 by one, and you can use it as a yeah. four by ones or one by four or Got it. two by two, et cetera, et cetera. But this is making it for independent channels. Correct. And so essentially these machines don't see the other machines in this. They can though. They can, but, it, but it's like there's no bus collisions essentially. Correct. In, in, in terms of when you're trying to read data. You've got it exactly right. So when it comes down to where the data is stored, that's up to the designer to decide what gets shared and what does not get shared and is completely private. And, and I think, would it be right to say that when you have a, um, sort of mem uh, memory architectures in normal machines, if you've got multiple processors trying to use one memory, you, can, you, can, you get like a, uh, you kind of get like a bottleneck in that in, in, in that, the fact that different processes are trying to use one. So is the controller helping to ease that bottleneck? Absolutely. So it also uh, uses SRIOV to uh, allow for that complete separation, but right. it also allows even virtual machines to keep themselves completely separated and have that managed from a nice lightweight hypervisor rather than a heavyweight software layer that's in between. See, this is absolutely fantastic. So. Because one thing I am, I am seeing a lot is, is more hypervisors being used on systems because, like you say, you want to have that isolation but have yes. like deploy, the deployable different systems. Yep. Um, and so when you have the hardware hypervisor, like you say, you don't have the software overhead. It's absolutely and right. So, and so obviously you reduce the speed per channel because you have to, but when you split it up into four, like you say, four machines onto one SSD and they don't kind of interfere with each other, which is absolutely fantastic. So, so what kind of speed are we seeing on this one? And then what speeds are we seeing on each port? So these are, I mean, again, these are each uh, PCIe Gen 4. So Gen 4 by 1, you know, uh, allows you to, to meet those maximum bandwidths for. Um, and again, depending on how you have it partitioned uh, in your file system, you can, you know, reach the max maximum uh, line rates on uh, a PCIe Gen 3. Uh, again, depending on what whether you're sharing and tying up tying up the memory behind it or not. And in terms of sharing uh, data between the different systems, is it is that sharing controlled at the hardware level or is it controlled at the software level? Uh, the sharing is set up by the, by the software uh, in the operating systems and the file system, but um, how it's shared in real time, uh, that, I mean, that's, that's controller hardware steering the data based on how it was set up. And so does that mean that, so does that, mean that different processes can access the same file at the same time? Yes. Now, what happens if two different files try to, sorry, two different processes try to write to the same file at the same time? Ah, very good question. So we do, um, in this demo, what we've done is set up a GFS2 file system, which accounts for that. So it, it prevents, uh, it prevents write, multiple writers to the same file at the same time. 
um, but steers the data if it's different files going to the same uh, partition at the same time. Fantastic. Yeah. Right, so now that we've covered that part, because yeah. I, I, I was absolutely quite surprised by to see, to see four <laughs> different ports to one SD. Right. Let's look at how you have used them. So could you go ahead and tell us what's going on here? Sure, let's go ahead and start over here. What we're looking at here is just one independent usage of this. So this one to this one. Yeah, yeah, this system, this monitor, this camera. So this one's pretty straightforward. All it's showing is the use of a single port in a private namespace. So this one's completely separated from the rest of these in terms of where the data is stored. When we move across, this one's doing a couple things. This one's got a private namespace playing a single repetitive video, which is our CEO, Sanjay. Down here, what it's doing is actually taking, it's showing uh, how the camera files are being written here to a shared namespace. So I'll skip <laughs> one over here. And what you're seeing here is as these are completed and written, this one is waiting for the file to complete, and then it's playing it back over here, reading from the shared namespace. Now, now this is interesting, because what you've got here is you've got one machine doing its thing. About, I, take, I take it this is a, like a, is this a machine learning system here you've got? Yeah, this is a, yeah, a, a demonstration that we, yeah, we have so, from uh, our partner NVIDIA here. And so, and so what you've got going on here is quite a data heavy process. Exactly. But, it, it, it's kind of like you're not, that process isn't resulting in a bottleneck for the rest of the system because it can continue to work by using that shared memory. Precisely. So, so the brilliance of the system is that he's generating some data, goes to here, while he's going over there, these can carry on doing their own thing, but they can also read those files at the same time. And, and I take it they can see the updates to that file as they come through. That's correct. So it's, yeah, again, it's, uh, this is, you know, you're seeing scripts running, right? Yeah. Can, uh, over here, you're seeing right there, the scripts yeah. running in the background and then that's just the playback of the video. What we've done is, is try to create a, a read-write intensive workload across all four ports. So here, this is a video of uh, actually our engineer driving into the office and into the <laughs> into the oh, uh, basement, which you'll see in our parking lot uh, in our Munich office. So Fantastic. So what I'd like to ask you is, compared to a network solution, because what I would imagine, the, if you didn't have this, what you'd have is like a bunch of different servers or a different computers all connected to a network. What advantage is this giving over something like that? Yeah, so that's a great question. What we've seen in the uh, architectures that try to leverage that type of uh, system is they'll have a, a very large, expensive PCIe switch to try to share a single SSD across multiple SOCs. So we've really incorporated all of that feature set for the switch into the SSD here, eliminates that expensive switch and also you know, because we're targeting automotive um, uh, at the high end of our uh, of our application challenges, uh, it is an ASIL D rated automotive product, so it is a you know safety critical application. We understand, uh, so therefore we've put our effort into making sure that it's fail safe, that it's uh, very low fit rate, and that uh, we've gone through all the processes needed to make it very high reliability. And so. So what's the maximum length of these cables do you think you can get? Uh, that's a good question. Typically, we probably wouldn't see cabling in the system. Um, these are... Uh, oh, yeah. oh, sorry, it would be all integrated so that you've got yeah. one central compute system. Exactly. You've got, that, you've got that sort of four channels it's, integrated. It's obviously it. capable. We've done this with these cables. Oh, I see. These are oh, relatively I cheap. I you can buy off the shelf. So. Good, good, something like this. I do wonder if that could be used in, in server racks as well, where you might want to have a distributed system used in the same common memory Yes. Uh, so like, so, so like uh, common memory access. Because one, one issue I do know that you can have when creating servers is, is having a whole bunch of, because I've actually got servers at home which I play with, and I know that <laughs> if you've got like a bunch of hard drives, yep. it can be hard to share those simultaneously across different virtual machines at the same time. Right. Because they usually do have right collisions. It, they do, it doesn't like that. So what I can see the benefit here is that you can actually simplify the hardware to one drive you where you have multiple systems connected at the same time. Correct. Um, and hence, where, that's why the cabling question came in, because I'm thinking, how could I use this? Yeah, how do I use rack? this at home? Yeah. Exactly. Well, <laughs> right. yeah, essentially. Um, but, but like you were saying, in an automotive application, you'd have one compute system with this integrated into it so that individual independent processing systems can do their own thing yeah. without interfering with the others. That's right. Now, I suppose the reason why this is advantageous is if you've got some safety critical system, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not kind of, it's, it's not waiting on someone else, correct, to finish what it needs to do. Yeah. So yeah, we don't have all of our specs laid out here, but we do have a quality of service specification for that exact reason, so that 
if you're sharing uh, data across domains, let's say you have uh, high definition maps that are used for both ADAS and in the digital cockpit domain, that those domains don't have conflicts with one another that are kind of caused a safety critical problem for you. So that's, uh, that's the vision for that. As we see those centralization yeah. of the domains, that becomes more and more critical. I, 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 would I be right in thinking that SSDs are more appropriate for automotive applications because obviously higher speeds, but more importantly, they're more rugged in terms of like mechanical vibration, temperature variations, those kind of things. As opposed to a hard drive? I think so, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah the, the spinning, all spinning yes. classes, basically. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Click, clicking yes. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, we've designed the, both the, the memory behind it, the NAND uh, behind it, and the controller to meet a broad, you know, mm. uh, the broad uh, temperature range for automotive uses, mm. but uh, also, of course, uh, the ruggedization, the package testing that we do to ensure that, you know, the vibration, the flex, the temperature variations, that we meet all the existing mission profiles and all of the feedback that our customers give us, as well as, of course, all of the automotive standards that come with those requirements. Fantastic. So let's say we're looking 10 years into the future. Mm -hmm. How would you see this? being used in the automotive industry? <laughs> well, I think um, we'll see evolutions of this, right? Um, will we see more and more ports? I don't think necessarily. I think uh, as we go to the centralization, we're not seeing everything going into a single SOC uh, for all domains around the vehicle, right? That That isn't in the near term, isn't probably even in, in the 10 year horizon. So continuing with multiple ports, continuing to push the power or the power to performance ratio uh, to really crank the performance out of it, but still, you know, uh, not have to have any, uh, you know, exceptional cooling solutions, we'll, well say. Well, I think the advantage of splitting up is that you get a bit of redundancy as well. So you can have multiple systems doing the same thing, right. running from the same memory, all of them producing the same result. But if one, if one part doesn't, you can then like interrogate that data. That's right. So the ports are independent all the way through into the controller. And so if you had, uh, you know, let's say two different SOCs with, uh, their own private namespaces, you do get a bit of redundancy, even though you're talking about the same SSD. So again, you know, it being an ASLD um, product, the, the the whole point is that it can detect any issues, and with your redundant SOCs, you can you can alert and do something about that, right? Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, I've only got one more question for you. Sure. For the viewers out there who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with some pretty incredible four-port SSD uh, hardware or Micron products in general, what would you suggest they do? Well, they should reach out to their local field team or you know, to our contacts here at Micron. We would love to work with them and uh, talk about their architecture and their requirements you know, and find them the right product that's going to meet their needs. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much for having us today. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.